Hi, hello and welcome guys. Today we will be discussing the 2017-18 paper of Engineering Mathematics 3, that is our level 5 mathematics. Uh, we'll quickly start uh, from the question 1 and we'll move through all the questions. Okay, uh, the question 1 states that find the value of volume integral of the function over the region of inside a circular cylinder and lying between z equal 0 and z equal 1. Right. So this question has to be handled uh, uh, in the cylindrical coordinate system, right? So we'll just uh, quickly start to work out, right? So our function is given to us as uh, y plus c, right? In cylindrical coordinate system, right? Cylindrical, right? coordinate system we know y is equal to r sine theta and x is equal to r cos theta and is a this directly said right so our function would change it to r sine theta plus z right so our base is given to us as a cylinder in this with this base right and the height of the cylinder is defined by z equal 0 to z equal 1 so we know the range of z so while integrating, this is not an issue. We have to find the range of theta and uh, r, right? So we will substitute here. So r sine theta, r cos theta squared plus r sine theta squared is equal to one. So r would be equal to one. So range of r is zero to one and range of theta is obviously, you know, it's zero to two five since it is a whole cylinder, right? So if you find the volume, right, the volume uh, within that function that is given to us as triple integral, right, r sine theta plus z into r into d theta into dr into d z, right? So what would be the range of r? r is 0 to 1, theta is from 0 to 2, 5, z is from 0 to 1, right? So here, I, we can quickly integrate it. Uh, I'll just integrate by r. Uh, so if we integrate by r, we'll get get eta from zero to two pi. Here he said is from zero to one. When we integrate by r, it is r squared by two, sorry, r cubed by three sine theta plus he said r squared by two okay. from zero to one into d theta into d z, right? So this gives us sine theta by three plus z by two, right? isn't it? So here it's double integral, right? Into d theta into d. Simply now here after that it's a straightforward integration, right? Uh, so uh, I think you can handle that straightforward integration, right? So that is in the case you have to integrate this once by theta. If you integrate once by theta, it gives us minus cos theta by three plus is it theta by two, right? So here the range would be zero to two pi into d z here only one, right? That is from z is equal to zero to one. Then you have to substitute and again you have to integrate by z, right? So cos two pi and uh, zero, this cancels out and zero again cancels out, you'll get z into pi. So you'll get integration zero to one set into pi into d z, right? So if we integrate it, it comes pi into c squared by two from zero to one. So this is pi by two, right? So fairly simple integration part. That's why I quickly ran through it the fundamental idea is here if you write this one then after this is straightforward right uh, the second part right the second part in this question is a um, bit tricky right there's a reason i'll say that here the b part they are saying determine the volume of the region that lies behind the plane and in front of the region in the xy plane Right. First here we have to draw the figure, right? If you draw the figure properly, you can figure out uh, what is happening, right? 
So we'll draw both the 3D figure and the base, right? So I'll clear this. Right. So our base lies in xy plane, sorry, uh, yz plane, right? So the equation given to us are, right, they have given to us like z equal half into root of y and z equal 1 over 4 into y. These are a bit odd equation. So I'll change this in the manner like this, right? So we'll plot this. I'll plot this one first. So since it is a straight line, it's easier to plot. So y is equal to 4 is it, right? Then we have to find out how the y equal 4 is it squared graph behaves, whether it goes in this manner or whether it goes in this manner, right? So you can, if you have your basic mathematics knowledge, you can find it goes in the bottom, right? So we'll, we'll do, So here, right, to quickly find out, I'll substitute z equal half, right? So you'll get y equal two here and y equal one here. So obviously one is less than two, so it would be in the bottom. So here, you can find out the meeting points coordinate by solving these two, that is four z squared is equal to four z. So in that case, four z times z minus one, equal zero, so he said equal zero or he said equal one. So one is at the origin and other one is here, this value is one, right? So we have drawn the base, right? So if we draw our three dimensional figure, that is X, since Y Z plane is in base, I am keeping Y Z here, right? So in the Y Z plane, we are having this line, that is Y equal four Z, and we are having this line that is y equal 4z squared right? we know this is bounded by a plane called x equal 4 minus y minus c this is a trapezoid sorry this is a tetrahedron right or trapezoid it's a tetrahedron right so if we draw this tetrahedron right in the y z plane we know x is zero so right so in the y z plane x is zero so the equation would be uh, y is equal to minus z plus 4, right? So that would be a straight line like this, right? something like this. So now I have simply drawn this, but before drawing this, you have to figure out where this line cuts this base, our base area, right? So to find that, right, we know when x is equal to 1, both these graphs touch us together, right? So I'll substitute the same value here. So we know y is equal to minus four plus z. When z is equal to one, we know y is equal to three. So definitely it's below. So it would be something like this, right? So here the value is three, right? So since the value of y is three, it will go definitely uh, below the intersection point. So the area we are considering is only this one. Right? This is the required base area, right? So here in this figure, this required base area, right? I am dividing this area, I'll say that why, right? So this is the area, right? Now, if you com may complete the tetrahedron, right? Here the value is four, right? Here the value is also four, here also four, right? You can simply find out those values, right? So in the X is a plane, you know, Y is equal to zero, so in, then you can find the equation of this line. And after that, it's a simple plotting work, right? So then it becomes a 2D work and you can plot this. Now you can imagine this 3D figure, right? So if we extend this base to the, this plane, this slant plane, right? The figure would be something like this, right? So this is our solid, right? So we have to find that volume, right? So here you can't directly find this, right? So when you are finding the range of X, right? The range of X is from the bottom YZ plane to the slant surface. So when it comes to range of X, it's from zero to four minus Y minus Z, right? But here we are drawing a strip. Usually we used to draw a strip like this and find the area of this, right? 
from 0 to this value, right? This is actually 0.8 and this is 0.88. You can find this, right? Because this equation of this red line is, you know, this is y equal to minus z plus 4. Equation of this line, you know, y equal to 4 is it. If you solve 4 is it squared, this one, and this is uh, y equal to 4 is it, right? So now y equal 4 is it then, y equal minus is it plus 4. These two intersects here. So you're solving this, you can find this 0.8. And the uh, y equal 4 is it squared and this line intersects here, you can find 0.88, right? So until this line, the range of y is different. After this line, the range of y is different, right? So we are going to divide into two sections. Let's say one and two. For the first section, from he said this from 0 0.8 to, sorry, 0 to 0 0.8, right? He said this from 0 to 0 0.8. At that time, y is from, right? If you observe correctly, you can see it is from 4 is it squared to 4 is it, right? In the region one, this is region one, and this is region two, right? So in region two, if you see correctly, so at least from 0 0.8 to 0 0.88, at that time, y is right, from 4 is it squared to minus is it plus 4, right? So this is our area, I'll just, this is the first area, right? This is the second area. So there are two different areas due to the bounded uh, boundaries, right? So in case all three lines intersect at this point, this question is much easier. Since it is intersecting within the area, it becomes a bit tricky, right? So we have to find this V1 separately and V2 separately, right? So in that case, the total volume V would be given by triple integral, right? He said this from 0 to 0 0.8, uh, y is from 4 is it squared to 4 is it, and x is from 0 to 4 minus y minus c into dx plus dy plus, sorry, dx into dy into dz plus, again triple integral, he said this from 0 0.8 to, he said from 0 0.88, and here y is from 4 is it squared to minus is it plus 4. And finally, x is from 0 to 4 minus y minus c to dx plus dy plus dz, right? So while doing this integration, you have to be careful, right? Since if you see, x has the limit of x, right? Limit of x has two variables. Right. So limit of y has one variable. Right. In limit of e z, there is no variable. Right. So it's only constants. So you have to start integration from x because it has the highest number of variables. Then y finally by z. Then only you will get the volume in some sort of number. Right you will get a number. If you do in, in other ways, in the final answer, there will be a variable. So it, it is not the case, right? So we need a numerical value right, for the volume in this particular question, right? So that is question two, right? So when you're drawing the figure, consider all the possibilities and draw the figure so that it would be easy, right? Uh, now we'll go to C part. So in the C part, they have given us a bounded region, which is bounded by Z equal three plane and a cone, right? So it's a cone, right? So you'll see, we have to find this volume integral. So when it comes to cone, right? Handling with the cylinder, um, spherical coordinate system would be somewhat easier. So spherical coordinate system, we know x is equal to r sin theta cos phi right? and y is equal to r sin theta sin phi 
and z is equal to r cos theta right so the bounded region given to us is uh, by a z equal 3 so in that case r cos theta is equal to 3 so r is equal to 3 by cos theta so what is range of r r is from 0 to 3 by cos theta this is for r so we know square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to z this is the cones formula so if we substitute in the spherical coordinate system so r sin theta cos phi squared plus r sin theta sin phi squared is equal to r cos theta so if you solve in the left hand side it becomes r sin theta equal to r cos theta so r and r cancels out so tan theta equal 1 so theta equal pi by 4 so this indicates 0 to um, pi by 4 this is the range of theta right so obviously we know uh, the range of theta and range of r the other thing remaining is phi right so this is the entire cone so phi's range is from 0 to 2 phi right so we know all the ranges so triple integral right so phi is from 0 to 2 phi and theta is from 0 to 5 by 4 and r is from 0 to 3 by cos theta right so here we know square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared right so square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared this gives us r right you can find out simply substituting these so r times r squared sine theta into dr into d theta into d phi right so now you have to start with r then you can follow by either 2 theta o so either by phi, theta o phi and you can find the final embedded volume so the, here after that, there's a simply uh, integration part remaining, right? So that is the first question. So in the first question, they became a bit tricky due to that second part, right? So we'll... So in the next question, right? So question two, right? In the question two, they have said the velocity of a fluid is given by the vector field uh, it's a po cylindrical polar coordinate system right uh, find the flux they're asking us to find this particular integral uh, through the curved surface of cylinder whose radius is r and between 0 to 1 where n is the unit outward no uh, normal to the surface mm -hmm. right so it's a though it seems something odd it's a fairly easy question we'll see that Right. So here, uh, in the velocity of the fluid, right? So velocity is given to us as 1 over r times e to the power r. So this is e bar. So this is actually a unit vector, right? So similar to ijk, right? But in the polar coordinate system, right? So in the polar coordinate system, right? If there is a radius r like this, the vector r like this, and the angle theta, right? So in this direction of r, with the unit magnitude, the vector, the unit vector is e r, and in the rotation direction perpendicular to this one line is that is e theta, the unit vector, right? All's magnitude are one, right? So this is another rotation for e i. It can be written as e x j can be written as e bar y right k can be written as in this manner right all are same right uh, and the flux right the flux is given to us by the surface u bar into n into da right they are asking us to find on the surface right so on the surface we know radius r is equal to r so u bar can be written as 1 over capital R into E by R, right? So surface area, in the sur to find area dA, we know R into d theta into dr, right? R into d theta into dc, right? Not dr, dc, right? 
So here R is a constant, so you can simply substitute as uh, capital R. So U into N into DA. So this is equal to here. Uh, what is U? That is one over R into E to the power R E by R into N. So we know the cylinder, right? So if you just I'll draw the cylinder in this figure itself, right? Here, this will be our cylinder, right? So what is the vector perpendicular to the cylinder? The unit vector perpendicular to the cylinder. If you see the figure, this vector, the unit vector, which is along this radius, right? Would be this radial line would be the unit vector. That is e to the power r again, right? That is e, e r again, right? So the unit vector is also e r, right? Times r into d theta into d, is it, right? So here double integral, z so goes from zero to, one as they have mentioned theta is from 0 to 2 pi right so here like similarly i into i is one right dot product of vectors and the same in the same manner e into e r this is also one right so this is one r and r cancels out so the only remaining thing is d theta into d z so t if you integrate d theta you will get theta from 0 to 2 pi so then it is 2 pi D said you'll get E said from zero to one, then it is one, so the answer is two by right. So fairly simple thing, right? So the next question, uh, B part, they're asking us about the Gauss divergence theorem. So you have to mention the di theorem, you can get it from our textbooks. The second part is they're asking us to. Verify the divergence theorem of the vector field, right? So we'll quickly uh, see that also. So here, so from the divergence theorem, we know, right? So divergence, divergence of f into dv. So this is by the bounded region, is given by a surface f into n into ds, right? So if they ask us to verify, we have to find both the sides and show that that is both the sides are equal, right? We'll start from the LHS, right? So to find LHS, we need to know the divergence of f. So f is given to us as uh, 3x squared yz into i plus 3x y squared z into k, j plus 6xy z squared into k, right? So divergence of f is, right? So divergence of f is df over dx plus daba f over daba y plus daba f over daba c, right? So if we integrate by the respective terms, right? Right? So that by f1, f2, f3, right? So f1, f2, f3 means this is our f1, this is f2, right? This is f3, right? The actual scenario be behind this is, right? The divergence, right? That is, you can write it as something like this also, right? This delta marks states as daba by daba x into i plus daba by daba y into j plus daba by daba z into k dot times f right so this is a dot product you are multiplying f by this so when you are taking dot product i and i only remains j and j becomes k and k all other terms become zero if i into j is zero j into k is zero k into i is zero so that's why you can directly I have written this in this format, right? So after doing the partial differentiation, you'll get 6xyz plus here also 6xyz plus here also 12, 12xyz. So the answer would be 24xyz, right? So now we have to integrate, right? So the bounded region is given to us as from x from zero to a, y from 0 to b and z from 0 to c. This is the region given to us, 
our divergence is 24xyz into dx dy dz so that is equal to you can directly integrate this all together so you'll get 24 times x squared by 2 from 0 to a times y squared by 2 0 to b times c squared by 2 0 to c so you'll get a squared b squared c squared times a. 8 if i'm right sorry not 8 3 so divided by 8 so 3 so this is from the lhs right so in the next thing right the other part we need to know the unit vector for each surfaces so n is the unit vector moving outward of the each surface so we'll quickly draw a figure so that we can easily identify right right let's say this is x this is y and this is z here this is a here the value is b and here the value is c so we have to draw this figure right so this would be our figure right so there are totally six surfaces so we have to do this six times right so when x equals zero and x equals a when y equals zero and y equal b and when z equals zero and z equal c right so at each instances we have to find the surface f into unit vector into ds so this is the thing we have to find we know what is f right so the f is if you see it is 3x squared y is said i plus 3xy uh, squared is said into j plus 6xyz squared into k Right. When x is 0, the entire f is 0. So this is 0. So I'll just name it as, let's say, uh, L. So this L becomes 0. When y is 0, again, every term is 0. So simply L is 0. And when z is 0, here also 0. So 6 becomes 3 easily because of the 0 part. Right. When x is equal to a, in terms of x, you have to substitute a. Right, when x equal a, if you see, this is the plane, right? When x is a, this is the plane. What is the unit vector outside of the plane? That is i. So we have to multiply by i. So here, n is i. So what is only the i into i terms remain due to dot product? The other terms will cancel out. So what is the only thing remaining? That is 3a squared, since x is equal to a, y into z. What is the plane we are working out now? We are working out in y z plane. So that is dy into d z. So what is the range for z from zero to c and for y it's zero to b. So if you integrate, you will get three a squared, b squared, c squared by four, right? So when y is equal to b, right? When y is equal to b, this is the surface. Sorry, when y is equal to b, right? This one, the front one, right? So, what is the vector here? Unit vector outward, that is j. So, the outward vector is here. This is j. So, if you see, you have to find only j and j. This term remains. So, here three x b squared is a into dx into dz because y is constant only other two parameters are changing so here x is from 0 to a and y z is from 0 to c again if you integrate you'll get 3a squared b squared c squared by 4 finally when z is equal to c this is the surface so at that time unit vector is k right so here n is k and if you write you'll get 6xyc squared into dx into dy. So x is from 0 to a and y is from 0 to b. So you'll get 
six a squared b squared c squared by four right when you add up all these three right when you add up this one this one this and these zeros right all these six so these are our l's right all the l will give you uh that is six six plus six twelve so twelve by four three again the sigma of l gives you three a squared b squared c squared right so both the sides are equal right both lhs and rhs is equal so gauss divergence theorem is verified right so fairly simple right if you draw the figure and think properly the question would become much easier right so the next question third question we'll see third question is from stokes law so in this case you have to write the stokes law right after writing the stokes law they are asking us a question like this so they have said f into dr we are right f is given and c is a triangle with vertices right and the direction is given to us as counterclockwise direction right we'll see right so what is the stokes law right stokes law states this right surface curl f right times n times ds is given is equal to by a closed loop c into f into dr so here they have given a figure right a figure means they have given the vertices he said x y so like it's a tetrahedron right and they are moving in counterclockwise direction right all three are one one and one right so counterclockwise direction right so uh the f is given to us as z squared i plus y squared j plus x into k so we can find curl f right so curl f right is we can write the vector format i j k right times daba by daba x a daba by daba y a daba by daba z here z squared here y squared here x so this is equal to i times uh, when you multiply these two this and this you'll get zero minus j times uh, this i'll use another ink right this into this so that is one right minus this into this so that is two is it right finally right plus k times right k times these two and these two so that is zero so we will get j times 2 is at minus 1 this is our curl f right so we know curl f right and now we have three different surfaces right so one is when x equal 0 and another one is when is y equal 0 and another one is is at equal 0 right three different surfaces i'll quickly highlight those surfaces one is this the bottom one other one is this one other one is this for each instances the unit vector is different right so we'll start from is at equal 0 here is at equal 0 right it is at is equal to 0 here y is equal to 0 and here Uh, x is equal to zero. What is the unit vector here? Unit vector here n is equal to minus of k, right? Outward of the surface. Here n is here unit vector n is equal to uh, minus of j. Here unit vector n is equal to minus of i. So you have to do this for three different parts, right? So part one, we'll starting from here, right? This is part one, part two, and part three. when it comes from path 1 that is curl f into n right curl f into n curl f is based on j there is only one term which is j so j times k is 0 from path 1 we know that is curl f times n times ds is 0 right from path 2 right the curl f 
uh, part two there will be answer because j into j there is there will be a answer right so here minus of 2 is at minus 1 into j into minus j uh, sorry this minus is not there right right into j into d is at ds ds means what are the variables there that is dx and dz right so x changes from so we are going in counterclockwise direction right so x changes from uh, 1 to 0 right x is from 1 to 0 so at that time what is the uh, variation of z z is from 0 to minus x plus 1 so i have just written the equation of this line Right. So now it's a straightforward integration, right? So j and j cancels out. Cancels out means that is equal to one. So this one changes out into one minus two z. If you integrate with respect to z, you will get z minus z squared, right? From zero to minus x plus one, right? Integration x equal one to zero, right? Into d x. Here after that again you have to integrate and find the final answer that would be 1 by 6 we have to substitute and do integration right so that is easy so in the third part third path if you see again the unit vector is i and here the unit vector of curl is j so when you multiply that becomes zero so the double integral curl f into n into ds is zero so when you add up 1 plus, 2 plus, 3, this gives 1 over 6. So that would be the value right, of closed loop into dr. Right? So that is uh, Stokes law. Right? So uh, do the assignment questions which we got this year so that would be also helpful right so uh, next question is from uh, vector right question number four so here define an irrotational vector field right so when curl f is zero that is irrotational vector field right so then they're asking us to write to any properties right so in uh, curl f if curl f is uh, zero uh we in the first part we said that is irrotational field so if it is irrotational field we can say uh it the curl f is zero the other way around right and the meantime you can see uh, in a closed path the work done is zero uh and uh, uh, independent of the path the work done between two points uh, would be same right so you can uh, define that those are theory parts right uh, so the next part they are asking the C part uh, is they are asking us to prove that this is a irrotational vector, right? So you'll see that's fairly simple, right? So here our f is given as six x squared y z plus three y squared into i plus 2x cube z plus 6xy plus 3z into j plus 2x cube y plus 3y into k. Right? So curl f, we have to find curl f. Right? Curl f within modes, right? i, j, k, here daba by daba x, here daba by daba y, here and daba by daba y. So actually curl f is gradient into f, right? So it's a vector product, right? Here 6x squared y z plus 3y squared. Here 2x cube z plus 6xy plus 3z. Here 2x cube y plus 3y, right? So i times, right? These two, right? So this gives us Mm, 2x cube plus 3 minus 2x cube minus 3. 
so obviously this becomes zero so minus j into here this one into this one and this one into this one right so if we write here j times uh, six x squared y minus again six x squared y right so finally plus k times these two things this into this and this into this right k times we'll get six x squared z plus six y minus again you'll get six x squared c right minus six y right so obviously this is zero right, right? so curl f is done right and then they are asking us to find the scalar potential phi right so they have given us f is equal to grad phi so find phi we have to find phi right so uh, we know grad phi can be written as daba phi by daba x plus daba phi by daba y plus daba phi by daba c right into i here i here j and here k so we know we can equate the coefficients right by equating coefficients right we can write daba phi by daba x is equal to 6 x squared y z plus 3 y squared right so if we integrate by x we will get phi is equal to uh, we are integrating right so 2 x cube um, y is at plus 3x y squared plus f of x uh, y comma z right so we know while differentiating partially differentiating with x we know y and z are considered constant so we have to add a constant right that constant can be a function of y and z right we don't know that for sure so we can determine this function so but to determine this function we have to be clear that this can be a function of y and z right so now we have used one condition right there are another two conditions that is daba phi by daba y right we can find this from here so that is 2x cube z plus 6xy plus f dash of y my said that is partial differentiation of f f with respect to y by again equating the coefficients, we already know that 2x cube z plus 6xy plus f dash into y comma z. This is equal to from f, right? From f, we can equate this to this term. So that is 2x cube z plus 6xy plus 3z, right? So a few terms cancels out and we get f is equal to 3z, right? So we are, this f dash is a term which we got from differentiating with respect to y. So now we have to integrate with respect to y. So integrate with respect to y. So in that case, this becomes right here. This is 3yz plus g of z. So there can be a constant which is based on z only, right? So that is the thing we have to add here. You have to think carefully, that's all, right? In that case, now phi, the new phi becomes 2x cube y z plus 3x y squared plus 3y z plus g z, right? Again, we'll partially differentiate this with respect to z. So we'll get 2x cube y plus 0 plus 3y plus g dash is it again comparing this with two with this part right you can see 2x cube y plus 3y again here 2x cube plus 3y so in that case so g dash is at this zero so g said is a constant so k is a constant here a numerical any new number so phi is equal to 2x cube y z plus 3xy squared plus 3y, 3y z plus k. 
So that is our scalar potential function, right? So finally, the last part, they're asking us to find the line integral around a closed path. Uh, hence, consider if we are the same if for the same if, right? So this is fairly simple, right? In the previous part, right? You know, a law, right? Stokes law, right? So what is Stokes law? Stokes law states that curl F into N into DS is equal to the line integral F into DR, right? So we, they are asking us to find the line integral, right? You know, for this question, curl F is zero. So if curl F is zero, this entire part is zero. So the line integral is also zero. So you can argue this and finish that by. That's why they have only given 10 percentage, right? So fairly simple. So we are using Stokes law, right? So that's it when it comes to fourth question, right? So fairly simple part, right? So the next one, right? It's from uh, mapping. Um, right. So here, question number five, right? They're asking us to find the images of a rectangular region in set plane bounded by straight lines. Uh, Right, under the mapping, okay. okay. Uh, so you can do this by using the general formula, right? There is a general formula for this, right? So for any, there are two planes, right? One is Z plane, other one is the W plane, right? In the Z plane, we can write for any thing, we can write it as, in this manner, that is bx plus cy plus d equals zero. In the w plane, we can write d into x squared plus y squared minus, if I'm right, it is minus, right, minus c into x plus b into y plus a equals zero, right? So not, sorry, sorry, not in x, y, that is in uv. not in x, y, it's entirely based on u, v. So here d times u squared plus v squared minus c into u plus b into v plus a equals zero, right? You can try and prove that later, but I think uh, that is not necessary now. Ah, oh, sorry, plus or minus changes, right? not b into u, it's b into v. So these two changes. Okay. So c into c into v and b to u. Right? So this is the things. In the first thing they have said x is equal to 1, right? So when x is equal to 1, you can simply find that a is 0, b is 1, c is 0, and d is minus 1, right? So you have to change this in this format, that's all. Now you can substitute all these things in this side. So in that case, minus u squared plus v squared uh, plus u is equal to 0. So here you can write u squared plus v squared minus u is equal to zero. You can convert this. So u uh, minus half whole thing squared plus v squared is equal to half squared, right? So simple as that, right? So similarly for x equal to two, you can find a is again zero, b is two, c is zero, and d is minus two. So you can substitute, substitute all these values here similarly can substitute all these values here and you can find the new equation, right? So in that case, we can write minus two times 
u squared plus v squared uh, minus uh, that is zero so plus two u so b is not uh, two right b is one so b is a u that is zero okay. so you can write u squared plus v squared minus u by two is equal to zero so you'll get u minus one by four whole thing squared minus sorry plus v squared equal to one by four whole thing squared similarly you have to do for y equal one and y equal two after doing this you have to plot this in your u comma v plot right so this circle is a smaller one right it's one by four and here it is half so this would be something like this with a solid line because it's x equal one so here also solid line so the next one is with radius half so it is a bigger circle something like this and you have to draw the other two also right and you have to complete the figure right so that's it if you remember this common equation right this common one the transformation from z plane to w plane if you remember these two you can do this all right so uh, that is that first part right so but generally uh, i do it bit differently right this is the most common way you can apply this for all the questions but my way difference from uh, question to question right so here uh, the mapping is given to us as right the mapping is given to us as w o 1 o is it so i usually take write this as u plus i v is equal to um, 1 over x plus i y so x plus i y is equal to you can write it as 1 over u plus i v so x plus i y by multiplying by the conjugate you can write in this manner right u squared plus v squared so equating the coefficients you can get u over u squared plus v squared and here y is equal to minus v over u squared plus v squared so when x is equal to one you will get u is equal to u squared plus v squared so again you will get the same equation so half squared is equal to u minus half plus v squared right you will get the same equations by using the common method and this one under the mapping of w equal one over z but while using this one you have to be careful uh, to work out uh, the correct format right like this one so these formats should be correctly worked out so that only you will get this right so that is the first part right so fairly uh, simple first part right you have to draw and complete this figure right so you have to draw another two circles when it come for y equal one and y equal two and draw the all four circles here right so at the same time draw uh, the mapping in the set plane also draw both the mappings right so it is better right if you draw this one also right that is when uh, y equal one and y equal two x equal one x equal two right we'll get a rectangle here right right so draw both the things so this is in in set plane this is in w plane right so it's a fairly simple thing while handling uh, this one be careful for the mapping it might sometime it might come in polar format also right so the next part is taylor series right so in the taylor series they are asking us to find the taylor series of 1 over 1 plus is it right ln 1 plus is it right ln 1 plus is it you know the general method right so taylor series we are doing it from a long time right the general method uh, about a if you take a taylor series about a right taylor series 
about a right Taylor series right so we write f of is a is equal to f a plus f dash a into z minus a over one factorial right and a one factorial plus f double dash a into z minus a by squared over two factorial and this goes on right so in this case we know f is said that is ln one plus is said then you have to find they're asking us to find about zero so f zero you have to find f zero that is zero and then you have to find f dash is said then it will give you one over one plus is said right f dash is said that is one over one over one plus is said again f dash zero that gives you one and you have to find this uh, two or three times and you have to substitute in this equation and give this right so when taylor series is about zero taylor series about zero the other name is the maclaurin series right so if they state find maclaurin series that is Taylor series about zero. That is the only difference, right? So this is the traditional method, right? It's the traditional way. So mostly, most of us know the traditional way, right? So there's a, another easy, tricky way to do this one, right? So that is, we always know what is the Taylor series of one or one plus Z. So this is one minus Z plus Z squared plus Z cubed minus is to the power of four plus it goes on, right? So the only thing you have to do this here, if you multiply, integrate by both the sides with respect to DZ, you will get LN one plus Z. So that is Z minus Z squared by two plus Z cubed by three minus, right? Uh, so here minus, right? Here minus, here plus, right? Uh, Z to the power of four by four plus Z to the power of five by five and it goes on, right? So fairly another shortcut way, right? So the next thing they're asking us to find the region of convergence. To find the region of convergence, we need to know the nth term, right? That is the UN. So to find the UN, you can try to write this within a sigma. Right, so let's say n goes from one to infinity, right? So here as plus or minus changes, we have to bring in minus one to the power of n minus one into z to the power of n over n, right? So this is our nth term. Nth term is the thing which is inside these brackets, right? So we'll do a ratio test. So there are two tests. One is ratio test and the power test. Here, uh, ratio test would be easier, right? So from ratio test, we can write L is equal to limit in approaches to infinity within mod a u n plus one over u n. Right? So u n plus one gives minus one n into z n plus one over n plus one. So divided by u n. So un means minus one to the power of n minus one into z to the power of n into n here mod. Right? So limit n approaches infinity. So here, if you see, so l is equal to uh, n over n plus one, right? A constant remains uh, and a term of z remains, right? And minus one to the power of mod is one. So that goes out. So we can write the mods separately here n approaches to limit n approaches to infinity. Within Z, there is no any n, so you can take it out. So mod of Z times here, if you divide both up and down by n, and if you apply uh, the infinity for n, you will get one, right? So the limit is mod of Z, right? So the limit 
is mod of Z. For convergence, for convergence, we know mod of uh, L should be less than one. So in that case, mod of Z should be less than one. Right? That is the region of convergence for this particular Taylor series. Right? So the next part, they are asking us to find the Maclaurin series of ln 1 plus Z over 1 minus Z, right? the Maclaurin series. So you can write this as 1 plus Z minus ln 1 minus, sorry, ln 1 minus Z. So already we know the Maclaurin series of this one, right? So only we need to find for this one. Here, yeah, I'll write this as ln 1 plus minus Z. So in terms of Z, if you substitute minus Z, you will get the Taylor series of the Maclaurin series for this one also. So we know for this one, we can write it as Z minus Z squared by two plus Z cubed by three minus Z to the power of four and plus it goes on. Minus for here, it is minus Z, right? Uh, minus, minus Z squared by two plus minus Z cubed by three minus, minus Z to the power of four by four and it goes on. Okay. So now we have to simply solve this and find the Maclaurin series for this one. Okay. Fairly simple calculation, right? So that is the Maclaurin series part. The final part is Right, Lorentz series. Right, so this is Lorentz series. Right? So whenever you can't write a Taylor series, the Lorentz series comes in. So for example, when you substitute this minus two into this Z, it is into this function, it becomes undefined. Right, whenever there is an undefined format, at that time we have to go for Lorentz series. Right, so we'll see. So they are asking us to find write write the Lorentz series of f of z is equal to so f of z that is equal to z over z plus one into z plus two right so the region is given to us as uh, zero one and about z equal minus two right so this is the region we have to write the Lorentz series. So when it comes to Lorentz series, so handling the question in a tricky way, that is the easy one, right? So we already have a term Z plus two, right? So we'll try to uh, separate this, right? So to, to do that, I am writing like this, Z plus one over Z plus one into Z plus two minus one over Z plus one into Z plus two, right? So here Z plus one, Z plus one cancels out. You can write one over Z plus two. So now this is separated, right? This is one term in the Lorentz series. Minus, I'll try to uh, partially uh, fraction this, right? We'll write this in partial fraction. So here it is, that is Z plus one, here Z plus two, here minus, here one and one. So now we can write it as two over Z plus two minus one over, I'll write this Z plus one in this manner, right? I'll take it as Z plus two, right? So we have added one, right? Additional one. So we have to subtract that one. So I'll write it as minus one plus, right? So I'll take a minus out. So this becomes two over Z plus two plus one over one minus Z plus two, right? So now we can write the Taylor series for this. So we already know one over one plus Z. So this can be written as one plus uh, one minus Z plus Z squared minus Z cube, right? Plus in this manner, we can write the Taylor series expansion now, right? So two over Z plus two plus one minus, right? So here it is minus, right? So here it is plus 
and for again we know for minus also one or one minus is said this is easy one plus is said plus is square plus is s cube right this goes on easily so one plus is said plus two plus is said plus two squared plus is said plus three sorry is said plus two cube and it goes on, right so wherever Taylor series become undefined right so when you apply when you, when it is about two if you substitute this minus two this term becomes indefined right it's an undefined form at that time you can write the Lorentz series right so while doing Lorentz series try to do these uh, tricky things something like this and separating this set minus two and some sort of thing right so that is uh, the question number five right so i'll quickly go through question six so it's a fair the easy one right it's tensor right right so question six they are asking us to find the egan values and the principal axis of the tensor right so to find the egan values right so we know to find the egan values we have to write t of ij minus lambda times i equals zero this is the characteristic equation we have to find the characteristic equation so in that case six minus lambda zero one zero minus two minus lambda zero here it is one zero six minus lambda right so the expansion gives us six minus lambda times minus two minus lambda again six minus lambda right this is equal to zero right ah no sorry there's another part here right this is from the first one and the second part is zero from the third one if you see we'll get plus one times um, lambda plus two right equals zero right so now uh, we can take lambda plus two out so in that case we will get one minus six minus lambda squared right equals zero you have to solve this and find the values for lambda so lambda is minus two and uh, lambda is five and lambda equals seven so this is a simple solution so i have directly written these things you can solve this cubic equation isn't it so now we have to find the principal axis right so to find the principal axis right we have to uh, find the equation in this form that is t of ij minus lambda into i into x equals zero so we have to substitute lambda equal minus two right when we when we substitute lambda equal minus two we'll get eight zero one zero 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 and one zero eight times x y z times zero this is actually zero vector right sorry zero matrix not zero just it's a zero matrix right so here you can see that why you can't find y so y is a parameter t and the other equation is 8x plus c equal zero right so if z is equal to k right so uh, or if the easier thing is taking x as k. So if x is equal to k, c is equal to minus 8k, right? So in this case, you can write x, y, z matrix is equal to um, k, t, and minus, minus 8k. Uh, no we have simultaneous equation isn't it sorry i didn't see that right. we have simultaneous equation then other equation we have right we have another equation as x plus 80 z equal to zero right so by solving these two you can find x and is it right so then x becomes zero and z becomes zero so here actually not k right it's zero 
here also zero and here also zero. So if we take T out, you can write a vegan vector as zero, one, zero, right? Similarly, you have to do this for lambda equal five and lambda equal seven. So when lambda equal five, you will get a Egan vector, Egan vector and lambda equal seven, you will get another Egan vector, right? So when lambda is five, the Egan vector is one, zero, minus one. When lambda equals seven, the Egan vector is one, zero, one. Right. When lambda equal minus two, we just saw that Egan vector is zero, one, zero. Right. I'll name this as u one, u two, and u three. So if you have to see whether the these three are orthogonal. So to find whether these three are orthogonal, you have to find the dot products. So u one into u two, u two into u three, and u three into u. So if all these three are zero, right, then uh, these are orthogonal. So if we see u1 into u2, 1 into 1, 1, 0 into 0, 0, minus 1 into minus 1, that is minus 1. So the addition is 0. So then that is 0. u2 into u3, obviously 0. And u3 into u1, again, it's 0. So these three are orthogonal, right? So the Egan vector uh, we get is u1, u2, and u3, right? So in the principal axis, we have to divide this by yeah, mod the principal axis, we can write it as one over, right? Uh, root two, right? Zero, one over root two, that is minus one over root two. Again, one over root two, zero, one over root two. Finally, zero, one, zero. So this is our principal. So the next thing is, uh, they are asking us to write the tensor with respect to the principal axis, right? So with respect to principal axis, you can simply write that, that is our Egan values. So that is minus two, zero, 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 five, zero, 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 seven, right? And the C part, they are asking the equation, right? So the equation is, xi dash is given by lambda ij into x into i. So this is a simple equation, right? The final d part that is based on the transformation law, the transformation law states that t of ij dash is given by lambda ij into t of ij into lambda ij t, right? So our lambda ij is our principal axis, this one, right? So what is T i j, T i j dash is given by lambda i j. So, right? so our lambda i j, right? That is one over root two, zero, one minus one over root two. Again, one over root two, zero, one over root two. Here, yeah, zero, one, zero. This was our lambda i j times our T i j. That was our day vector which was the matrix which was given zero, one, zero, zero minus two, zero. 1, 0, 6 times the transpose. So we have to change the row and column. So 1 over root 2, 0, minus 1 over root 2. Here again 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, 0, 1, 0. So you have to multiply by this. You can use the calculator. If you multiply this, you will get the same answer as the principal vector. And the principal tensor of the principal axis that is zero zero yeah zero five zero 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 seven okay. you'll get the same value right so that is the thing when it comes to tensor right tensor questions there are some more questions in the level four mathematics also uh, i have already done a video i'll leave a link uh, so that is the tensor, right? So, so long what we have done is other bit easier questions, right? So especially when it comes to question number four, five, six, these three are easy, right? Uh, so this is the thing in my opinion. Uh, I think uh, you can start the paper, right? 
with question four, then five, then six. You can do all these three. These are easy. Then you can try the Stokes law, uh, Gauss divergence law, Gauss law. Uh, those things. That is question three, question two, question one. Sometimes it might. It's a question mark because we can't say uh, how difficult it would be. Other than this, this would be easy, right? About seven, eight, nine. Uh, in eight, if it comes based on simplex method, it's okay. Nine, you can do, right? Seven is long question. You have to do so uh, lengthy work, right? Easy, but it's lengthy. It's long, right? So my best choice, I would go with four, five, six, and then uh, you can try uh, Stokes law, Gauss, or the linear programming if it is simplex method. Mm, and if you're confident with statistics, you can go for uh, statistics. The last resort would be the seventh one and first one, right? So that is my opinion, right? So question selection. Right, when it comes to question selection. Right. So we'll quickly go through the PD partial differential equation also. Right. So when it comes to PDE, so they're asking us to solve this, right? So it's a lengthy calculation, right? We'll I'll Solve this as short as possible, right? So this is the equation, right? And we have to solve this one, right? Okay. Right. So our equation is, right? Daba squared y over Daba t squared is equal to four times Daba squared y over Daba x squared, right? We are uh, there are boundary conditions like these. These boundary conditions are very important. We need this at a particular stage. And here, daba y by daba t at x comma zero is given as zero, and y x comma zero is x times y minus x. Right. So here, we assume a solution and start to work out. Right. So we'll assume let y is equal to capital X of X into capital T of T, right? So I'm differentiating this with respect to time twice, partially differentiated, right? So at that time, X is a constant because it depends only simple X, but T, we can write it as, it, it depends only on T, so, we can write it as D itself, not DABA. It's a direct differentiation, right? So this is equation one, right? So I'll take it as equation two. This is equation one, right? Uh, again, with respect to X, if you differentiate Y, you will get T times DABA squared. Sorry, this is DABA. D squared X over DX squared. So this is equation three, right? So using equation alpha, equation two and three. So alpha, two and three. This gives x times d squared t over dt squared is equal to four times t into d squared x over dx squared, right? So I'll now I'll use variable separable tick. So variable separable idea, right? Method. So in that case, it becomes one over 4t times d squared t over dt squared. One over x times d squared x over dx squared. I assume it as minus omega squared. So you have to find omega, right? So I assume it as minus omega squared x. 
so from this we can write 1 over 4t into d squared t over dt squared is equal to minus omega squared so here dt squared over dt squared is plus omega squared that is 4 omega squared into t is equal to 0 if you solve this we can write t is equal to c times i'll write c here right c times cos 2 omega t plus simple t 2 omega t plus d times sine 2 omega t right equation number four right similarly 1 over x into d squared x over dx squared is equal to minus omega squared so this gives dx squared over dx squared plus omega squared x equals zero so the x can be written as a cos omega x plus b sine omega x so equation five. so i am substituting both equation four and five into equation number one right so from four five and one right four five and one we get right y is equal to a cos omega x plus b sine omega x times c cos 2 omega t plus d cos this is d d cos d sine 2 omega t right so we know the boundary condition that is y 0 comma t is 0 so in that case 0 is equal to a c cos 2 omega t plus d sine 2 omega t so this entire portion cannot be equal to 0 in that if that is 0 then entire y is 0 so this implies a is 0 so our new y becomes b sine omega x plus so into c cos 2 omega t plus d sine 2 omega t right so now we are using the next boundary condition so that is phi comma t so if you substitute so zero becomes b right so zero equal b sine phi omega phi right so cos 2 phi is zero right and sine 2 uh, right so we are substituting for only for x isn't it sorry so here c cos 2 omega t plus d sine 2 omega t right so we already know this cannot be equal to zero again if b is equal to zero then entire pde becomes zero our y becomes zero so in that case we know sine omega phi is zero so that is equal to sine zero so omega phi is equal to n phi right so omega is equal to n right so we have found omega in terms of n so now uh, y becomes y x comma t becomes b sine n x c cos 2 n t plus d sine 2 n t right the next boundary condition is based on daba y by daba t equal 0 that is x comma 0 is equal to 0 so this is the next condition so we have to do a differentiation so daba y by daba t so that gives us b sine n x here uh, minus 2 n c sine 2 n t plus 2 n d cos 2 n t right so if you substitute our boundary condition so zero becomes 
uh, b sin nx here if you substitute zero so sin constant becomes zero the only thing remaining is uh, two times nd two times nd we already know this cannot be equal to zero this is not equal to zero n cannot be zero so this implies d is zero right so we know why x comma t becomes now b times c sine nx into cos 2nt right so in terms of uh, bc i'll uh, write e and the same times when you change n you will get a new value for y so y can be written as e n sin nx cos 20 so each time we change n we'll get a new value for en and y n right so the our entire y x comma t would be sigma n goes from 1 to infinity en sin nx to cos 20 so as n changes we'll get so many values so we'll the sum of those values would be our final solution right now the final condition comes into play right the final condition is y x comma zero is equal to pi into pi minus x into x right so what is y x comma zero right so y x comma zero gives us from our solution it gives us sigma to infinity that is en into sine in x right so from the fourier transformations we can write right en is equal to so the only sign is right so we are writing sine series 2 by 5 0 to 5 since the range of x is from 0 to 5 right our function that is 5x minus x squared into sine in x to dx this is a fourier sine series right to solve this right we can write 2 by 5 so the particular function right so this is a simple uh, fourier series question now so minus of 5x minus x squared cos nx by n plus the differentiation of the function so that is phi minus 2x sin nx by n squared finally again plus so minus plus plus so my a minus 2x sorry minus 2 into cos nx by n cube okay so 0 to 5 so after substituting the values right we get en is equal to en is equal to minus 2 cos n5 by n cube minus minus 2 by n cube right so when uh, right when n is odd right we get when n is odd we get phi uh, that means phi 3 phi in that man right so cos phi that is minus one so both the terms add up right so n phi cos n phi minus one to the power of n so n minus one so it becomes eight by five okay? eight by so there's another two out here to two by five Uh, 
right? So when it is E1, it becomes zero, right? So now we have to only consider about the odd terms, right? The E1 terms becomes zero. Right, let me check again. So if you observe properly, so minus one to the power of n. So when n is one, it is minus one. So two, yeah, right. So now here, right, we know uh, for the odd, right? So y x comma t when sigma n equal one to infinity, right? So what is En for odd values? En is eight by, oh, only for odd values, right? So you have to be careful when you are substituting. So that becomes two n minus one cube into five, right? Times sine two n minus one into x cos four n minus two. So that is the PDE solution, right? So this EN part is, so this is from Fourier series, right? This is Fourier series part, right? So only that last part is tricky, right? Except that last part, you can do the entire question, right? until this part it is fine until here right finding this en is the tricky one right other than that you can handle the pde part right so the next one is the cosine transformations that is the fourier transforms right so when it comes to the fourier transform uh, you have to observe the boundary conditions to find which transform you have to use. So that can be easily found out when there is a differentiation given, that is this DABA by DABA X, DABA U by DABA X. If this is given, you have to do Fourier cost transformation. If this is not given, then it is Fourier sine transformation, right? So this particular question is from Fourier cosine transformation, right? So you'll see how to do that, right? So, so we know they have given to us as da by u by da by t is given as da by squared u and da by x squared. So both the side we are taking for your cosine transformation. Right. Due to the boundary conditions, we are taking for a cosine transformation, right? So the for your cosine transformation is something like the square root of two by five integration zero to infinity. Here the function that is da by u by da by t times cos omega x into dx. That is again equal to square root of two by five right here zero to infinity again the function cos omega x into dx right so here you are integrating with respect to x so here the partial differentiation is with respect to t so we can take the partial differentiation out right so in that case we can write square root of 2 by 5 right zero to infinity u times cos omega x into dx, right? Yes, this is equal to square root of two by five. Here, we can have to use integrating by parts. So in the case of integrating by parts, uh, so this is our u, right? So in integrating by parts, we have to select, and here, da by u by da by x times 
cos omega x right minus integration okay in raba u by raba x minus so sine omega x by right sine omega x into minus omega right into dx right so this is the Fourier transformation of u this u bar right so here if there is u that is a Fourier transformation of u right so this gives daba u bar by daba t equal to square root of 2 by 5 right so here we have a condition from 0 to infinity right so now we have to see the boundary conditions right so they have said when uh, x approaches uh, infinity u becomes zero right so when x approaches infinity u is zero so then obviously da by u by da by x is also zero right minus when uh, we substitute uh, zero uh, for oh, x cos zero is one cos uh, 0 is 1 and da by u by da by x when x is 0 is given to us as minus 2. So this is minus 2, right? Minus, right? We have minus omega. If that omega comes out, this becomes plus omega. Here it remains 0 to infinity da by u by da by x into sine omega x into dx, right? So here again, da by u bar by da by t, right, equal to square root of 2 by 5, it's in brackets 2 plus omega times, again, partial differentiation. From partial differentiation, we can write, right, sine omega x, that is our u, into this is, if you integrate, this becomes u, so 0 to infinity minus, right here, again, u times omega cos omega x into dx, okay? 0 to infinity, right? So, da by u bar by da by t, right? Right, we'll see the values. So, square root of 2 by 5, here 2 plus omega times. So, when it uh, uh, is approaches infinity, that x approaches infinity, they have said u is 0, right and sine 0 is 0 so again minus 0 minus here omega times u into cos omega x into dx so 0 to infinity right so if we remove the back cuts or da by u bar by da by t is equal to 2 times square root of 2 by 5 uh, plus so it becomes minus omega squared into square root of 2 by 5 0 to infinity u into cos omega x into dx again if you see properly this entire portion becomes u bar right so we can write da by u bar over da by t equal 2 into square root of 2 by 5 minus omega squared u bar right so this can be rearranged in such a way. So da by u bar by da by t minus omega. So plus omega squared into u is equal to 2 into square root of 2 by 5. So we have to find the integrating factor. So this is now this becomes a level 3 question. Integrating factor. right? So integrating factor is e to the power omega squared into dx. Right, so omega squared into dt. So this gives us e to the power omega squared t. Right. So we have to multiply the entire equation in the both sides with integrating factor. So this gives da by u by da by t plus omega squared into u. Right. So that is u bar. Right? Here e square e into omega squared t. Here again two into e into omega squared into t. 
square root of 2 by 5. Right? So this can be written as right d by dt e to the power omega square t into u bar that is equal to 2 times omega square t into square root of 2 by 5. If you integrate both tight with respect to t you will get e is omega square t into u bar is equal to 2 root 2 by pi over omega squared into e to the power omega squared t plus c. Right. So now if we find u bar, that is the Fourier transform of u, this is 2 over omega squared into 2 by 5 plus c into e to the power minus omega squared into t. So now we have found the Fourier transform of u. So still we haven't found u. We have found the Fourier transform. This is Fourier transform. That is Fourier cos transform of u. Right? So our, there is an initial condition for us stating that u x comma 0 is 1 and 0 when in these conditions. Right? So this is a condition. So we will find uh, u bar x comma 0. So u bar x comma 0 is when you apply t, uh, right? At u bar x comma 0, we can write it as 0 to infinity. This is applying for your transform for this condition only, right? So u into x comma 0 cos omega x into dx right so we have to now separate this uh, limits so u bar x comma 0 square root of 2 by 5 from 0 to 1 the value of u x comma 0 is 1 so that remains cos omega x into dx plus square root of 2 by 5 is 1 to infinity this is 0 times cos omega x to dx so this becomes zero so this is equal to zero so we have to solve only this part so 2 by 5 times sine omega x by omega from 0 to 1 right so it gives square root of 2 by 5 sine omega over omega so this is u bar x comma 0, right? So we have found u bar x comma 0, right? From one way. So similarly, if we apply t equal 0 in this equation, we can find u bar x comma 0 in another way, right? So when t equal 0, right? u bar x comma 0 from this equation, from the asterisk equation, when t equals 0, we can write 2 over omega squared into 2 by 5 plus c, right? By equating these two, right, we can write c is equal to 2 over 5 times sine omega over omega minus 2 over omega squared into square root of 2 by 5. Right, so that is C. Now you know the value of C, right? So the remaining thing is only taking inverse Fourier transform. So we have to take inverse Fourier cost transform. Right? So inverse Fourier cost transform gives us u x comma t, right? Is square root of 2 by 5, right? 0 to infinity, right? Or u bar x comma t times cos omega x into d omega, right? So in terms of u bar x comma t, you have to substitute the value, right? And 
give the final answer. That means no need to solve it. You have to just substitute and give the answer with this integration itself, right? Because the solving is uh, is not required there, right? Uh, that is the Fourier cost transform, right? So bit lengthy, and the, there are a few steps you have to keep in mind, especially uh, here. These steps we have to take this uh, DABA by DABA T out, right? And you have to substitute this U bar, right? Similarly, you have to so again, you have to substitute U bar here, this one, and the integrating factor part. And finally, uh, this transformation because you know the initial condition for U, but you don't know the initial condition for U bar. So you have to find the initial condition for u bar and then find c. So these are the critical points. So if you know those critical points, you can handle the partial differential equation based on Fourier transforms. Right? So that is that one. All right. So now question number eight. All right. So when it comes to question number eight. So this is a linear programming question, right? So a person has 2000 acres of land, which he can grow corn, wheat, and rice. Each acre of corn costs rupees 100 for preparation, seven man days of work and yields a profit of 30. And acre of cost, uh, wheat costs 120, 10 man days work and yield profit of 40. An acre of rice cost, okay, eight days and a profit of 20. If one lakh for preparation, uh, 8,000 man days, how many acres to be allocated, right? So we have to identify the variables and formulate a linear programming model. Only they're asking you to formulate, not to solve. They're asking you to write the formula only. So uh, let's take uh, X1, X1 to be, uh, acres of corn, so x2 uh, acres of wheat, so x3 acres of rice, right? So they have said to maximize the profit, so maximum is said. So according to the profit for corn, that is 30 rupees, so 30 into x1, right, per acre, so 20, 40 into x2 for uh, wheat and 20 into x3 for rice, right? So this is the thing we have to maximize, right? The other things, conditions are given to us as the cost. The cost should be less than 100,000, right? So the cost should be less than 100,000, right? So it should be less than 100,000 and we have to accumulate each cost. So for corn, it's 100 rupees and for wheat, it is 120 and for rice, Again, 120. Then they are asking about man days. So there are different conditions. We have to satisfy each condition. So man day hours is, should be less than 8,000. So for corn, it's seven. And for wheat, it is 10. And for rice, it's eight, right? And finally, the total area, right? Allocation should be less than 2,000. So that is x1 plus x2 plus x3, right? And we know there's another condition is x1 comma x2 comma x3, these should be greater than or equal to zero. That cannot be negative. So these are the variables and the linear programming uh, conditions, right? So that is the first part, right? Uh, the second part question, Second part question is consider the following linear programming model and they are asking us to maximum maximize this using simplex method and uh, they are asking us to verify this, right? So we'll see. So the conditions are uh, maximum he said is equal to 20x1 plus 30x2, right? And the conditions are given 2x1 plus 3x2 should be 
uh, less than 120 x1 plus x2 should be less than 35 and 2x1 plus 1.5 x2 should be less than or equal 90 and x1 comma x2 are greater than or equal 0 right so we have to convert this inequalities into equations so in that case we are adding some uh, surplus values right that is 2x1 plus 3x2 plus s1 equals 0 so 0 means not 0 that is 120 right 120 x1 plus x2 plus s2 equal 35 and 2x1 plus 1.5 x2 plus s3 equal 90 Right here again, S1, S2, S3, all are greater than O equals 0. And this Z equation is converted in this manner. Minus 20X1 plus uh, minus 30X2 plus it equals 0. Right? So now we are going to form a chart. Right, X1, X2, S1, S2, S3, right? Z, right? Right, so we are going to substitute some values here. Right, so what is the co coefficient of x1 in the first equation? That is 2, here 3, here 1, here 0, 0, he said 0, and this value is 120. Right, in the second equation, it's 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, here also 0, and 35. Right? In the third equation, if you see, it's 2. 1.5, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 90, right? And finally, from our, he said, maximizing equation, you can see this is minus 20, this is minus 30, here, it is 0, 0, 0, and for he said it is 1, and here again, 0. So this is the chart, right? After filling this, you have to find the most negative one. Right, the most negative one is this one. So this is our pivot column. Right? After finding the pivot column, you have to find which has the smallest pivot. Right? So this is the pivot column. So here you have to divide 120 by 3, here 35 by 1, here 90 by 1.5. Right? So here it's obviously 0. Right? Here, the, here no, you have to consider only these three. Right? So this has the smallest pivot right this this row this is the smallest pivot right so this is our pivoting point right so here x so here we have to change in this column except this one we have to change everything as zero right so if we draw our new chart right Right in the new chart. X1, X2, S1, S2, S3, C. Right? So the second row, not the first row, the second row is going to be same. That is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 35. So other things will definitely change, right? So now this 3 has to be 0, right? So in that case, you have to multiply, sorry, you have to multiply the second row, this row. You have to multiply this one by 3 times and subtract from 1. So in that case, this becomes minus 1, this becomes 0, right? This becomes 1, right? So here becomes minus 3, this is 0, 0. So when you multiply this by three times, 105. So 120 minus uh, 105, that is 15. So similarly, you have to make every other thing as zero in the second columns, right? So similarly, if you convert this, this becomes uh, 0.5, zero. So you have to multiply the second row by 1.5 and subtract from the third row. So three minus. 1.5 times of second row, right? 
So here this becomes zero. Here this becomes zero. This is minus 1.5. This is one. He said this zero and this becomes 37.5, right? So final row, right? That applies for the final row also. You have to do the same thing here also. Here this becomes 10, here this is zero, here also zero, here 30, here zero, here one, here 10, 100,050. So again, in the last row, you have to see which is most negative. So here there is no any negative. So you have come to the optimum stage, right? If there is again a negative, you have to find the most negative one. You have to find the pivot row. And again, you have to con con continue this, right? So here, if you see only, there is only one solution for X2. That is only, there is only one numerical value here, one. Other everything are zero. So this is basic. Similarly, this is basic. This is also basic and this is also basic. Other things are non-basic, right? So from this basic solution, you can write X2 as 35, right? And uh, uh, you can write uh, S1 as 15 and so here from the basic solutions is X2 35 S1 15 and S3 is 37.5 and maximum Z is equal to 100,050. Other non-basic things that is X1 is zero and S2 is also zero, right? So that is the solution. Now they are asking us to analyze this graphically, right? To analyze this graphically, you have to draw these uh, conditions and the maximum curve in the graph, right? So that is for X1 and X2, right? You have to draw the conditions. That is the condition, what are the conditions? That is C equal to 20 X1 plus 30 X2, right? So this is the maximum one. So our there are three conditions. That is 2 X1 plus 3 X2 is less than or equal 120. Other one is x1 plus x2 less than or equal 35. Other one is 2x1 plus 1.5x2 less than or equal 90. You have to draw all these three in this curve, right? So that is, so one is like this. This is x1 plus x2. So I'll name it. This is A, B, and C. So this is B, right? 35 and 35, right? Next one is um, something like this. So this is uh, 60 and this is 48. This is curve C and curve B, the curve A. Is something like this, right? This is curve A. So after drawing all these string, the only area satisfying, all should be less than, right? Right, all should be less than means all should be lying below this line. To analyze this, you can take the origin, zero comma zero. If you substitute in the first curve, it satisfies, it is correct, right? So that is the side, that is the below the line, right? For first curve, or for A. For A, this is the area. Again, for if you take B, right? this area, right? If you take C, again, same this area, you have to analyze, right? So all three area are common for this portion, right? So what are the extreme points here? So there are three extreme points, right? One is zero comma zero, one other one is zero comma thirty five, other one is thirty five comma zero. Right. So when x is zero and y is x two is zero, he said this also zero. So this is x one and x two. He said this also zero. When x one is zero and x two is thirty five, this is thousand and fifty. 
when x1 is 35 and x2 is 0 this is 700 so what is the most optimum one that is 1050 maximum one so that is the graphical analysis part right so if it is a simplex method question that would be easy other things are also easy you can find it from the previous years right so the last question question number nine right right so when it comes to question number nine right so this question i actually you can uh, handle this with uh, the help of the calculator right so there are a few data right so method one method two method three a lecture which just uh, wishes to test three different teaching methods uh, to three groups of six students each are chosen at random and each group is taught by different method the same examination is then given to all students then the marks are shown in the following table determine at the five different five percentage one percentage significance level there is a significant difference in teaching methods so they are asking us to find whether there is a significant difference in the teaching methods right so we have to do an hypothesis so mostly in this case we have to do an f hypothesis right that is a um, f table one a distribution right so the chart would be given right we'll see so the data are right right for method one right so if you see right so i'll use the scheme here so it would be easy for me right so this is the method one method two and method three right so you can find the mean uh, and uh, finding mean that is easy right grand mean means adding all these 18 values and dividing by 18 right that is the grand mean. so that is also fairly easy part right so you have to remember the steps in that case you can easily handle right so finding the mean and grade grand mean is not a problem these are the hypotheses that is those are same and not equal one hypothesis is considering that all three means would be same the another hypothesis is considering that they there might be some difference right uh, right so here you have to keep in mind two equations you have to keep this in this equation right this one and this one right these two things you have to keep in mind right xj is the mean x double bar is your uh, grand mean right so you have to calculate this for all three values all three sets so there are three different sets you have to calculate this for all three different sets and you have to find this total value right and here this sj right this sj part is the standard deviation right so standard deviation you have to calculate from uh, for these values right i know you can uh, use the help of the calculator here right right so let's see so if you go to the calculator menu and in uh, mode uh, 3 so this is stat right we are using only one variable so that is one so our first variable let's say 85 the second variable is 62 the third variable is 71 and the fourth variable is uh, 58 and next is 73 and 65 right so all six variables are given so then clear this plus shift and uh, one right plus shift and one we are finding the variance that is four if you go to four you can find x bar you can find the mean and everything right 
so in that case to find the variance you have to select uh, 4 right so it gives you the standard deviation directly right for each values for you can do this for separately you can find the mean also if you go to mode sorry not mode sorry uh, shift 1 and if you go to 4 and you have to find x bar that is 2 right so that is 69 right you can uh, calculate this with the help of the calculator itself right now you know the variance right now if you know the variance there for each right this part right if you know this sj value for all those three uh, graph uh, data set separately right that is if you know the sj nj is the number of datas right there are six datas right so in that is six minus one into five into the variance that is 9.612 and for other two values you have to calculate and find this total right so after finding the total right you can use the cal right try to use the cal calculator then it is easy now we have to fill this table right now when it comes to this table this is the value we calculated first then the other value this sst is the addition of those these two the 629 and 1200 value gives the sum right there are a total 18 number of data so here we used to write one less that is 17 right so degree of freedom there are three sets of data so the degree of freedom would be for here two so 17 minus two that gives 15 here right so the MS is found in such a way that 629, that is MS is equal to SS divided by DF, right? So in that case, you have to find this. Here we don't find MS. This F is given by 314 or that 8889 divided by 81.1111. So that is this F value, right? So these things are done by this f value is calculated using our calculation right the next f value we are going to take is from the chart right so we need this 2 and 15 and 5 percentage 5 percentage means 0 0.05 so now we are going to our chart right here in the chart right so we know what our degree of freedoms one is two so v1 is two v2 is 15 right so this is one percentage significant chart so we have to see five percentage significant chart right not the one percentage one right that is the five percentage one now this one this is the five percentage one, right so you have to see for the respective one right don't interchange that so here two and here 15 so the value is 3.68 right so that is the value we need right so what is the value here that is 3.68 right so they've calculated was 3.88 right if calculated was 3.88 and if from the chart is 3.68 right so if the calculated value is greater than this is the calculated this is the chart value if the calculated value is greater than the chart value that goes to the rejection region so at that time we reject the h naught hypothesis that is mu1 equal mu2 equal mu3 this is rejected that means there is a significant difference between the means right that is the meaning here right in the second part they are asking about one percentage Right. So again, you have to go for the one percentage significant chart. And here, if you see in the one percentage significant chart, the value is 6.36, right? So here the value is 6.36. So in that case, the calculated value is less than the table value. So it is not in the rejection part. So that can be taken that H naught can be accepted that we can say there is no any significant difference, right? So that is the last part question, right? So that is fairly easy, right? So I 
think you if you practice enough and use the calculator uh, you can handle that question also so i think uh, uh, you would have uh, understood some of the discussions i was a bit quick since it is a long time so i did it a bit quickly and you have the scheme you go through the schemes and uh, hope you would have gained some knowledge uh, let's meet in another video session soon